in a very, very um, vulnerable moment. All the institutions that I'm aware of in the high, of higher learning, certainly in the Boston area, all have had a major hit to their endowments, which then result into a major decrease in their ability to support operations. A stimulus package of, of which several billion goes to NIH and NSF funding will temporarily actually remove that pain. And for sure, there, there will be a larger number of young investigator, investigators who previously, as in last year, would have not made the pay line and now will be funded. But then if on the other end of that two years, three years of funding, the NIH funds dry up, relatively speaking, and the institutions are still not able, because their endowments have not risen up again, mm -hmm. to support them at all, then those, that seed corn generation that will have been initially propelled by the stimulus will end up uh, flailing away, trying to find some way of supporting themselves. And it may not be in research, at least not in biomedical research. And that will be uh, a very, very uh, dramatic uh, negative result for a period where we should be taking full advantage of these new discoveries that have been enabled by our investment in the Human Genome Project and stem cells and so on. So that's the danger, that we will start the, our colleagues on a career, and after two, three years, the rug will be pulled out from under them. And there is no safety net. The institutions themselves are in um, financial distress of at least a five-year gap where there'll be no one coming up the uh, hierarchy of uh, the scientific establishment to actually lead. And that's going to retard our ability to take advantage of the genomic revolution and translate it into uh, medical science. It's going to take our advance. It's going to slow us down to take advantage of the stem cell advances and turn those into science. And so, the, our best and brightest will then not only uh, be the solution of those who already went into it, but they'll stop going into science. And we already have a problem attracting best and brightest into science. And if there's going to be essentially no future, even for very very committed young investigators, they're not. Uh, uh, silly, they're, not, they're well informed, they'll go elsewhere. Pharmaceutical companies will be the first to tell you that they have a big problem right now with finding new compounds, new targets, and if we don't have a viable partner in academia, we're really missing half of the equation. So I'm very concerned that a big part of the brain trust for medical discovery is going to be gone. Likewise for stem cells. We now know how to make uh, immortalized uh, stem cells uh, from adult tissues. But how do you actually use that to treat disease? Lots of work needs to be done there. Will some of that work be done by biotech? Without a doubt. Is most of the expertise still in academia? Yes. And so if we don't support our researchers, especially the young ones, again, we're not going to translate those findings into um, actual medicine.